Hi YouTube, this is Curious Guy. Um, in my last posting I talked about the Make Magazine's super simple FM transmitter. Uh, this is a, uh, a little circuit with a few, basically about 10 components, that was able to produce uh, some pretty, uh, pretty impressive, uh, if basic, uh, FM transmission. Uh, I was able to post a, a video of that uh, earlier. Um, but having made this relatively simple circuit with a few capacitors and a coil and so forth, um, you know, you're able to achieve almost a hundred million cycles or oscillations a second. Uh, it's really quite impressive. Um, this one's op operating at 99.7 megahertz in the FM band. And it got me thinking about why things like this work. Um, wh why do things oscillate? So, um, as part of my learning curve, uh, I'm making this series of little clips and videos simply to be able to uh, um, articulate what I'm learning and maybe share it with other people. Uh, what I'm going to look at today is LC circuits or tank circuits. These are primarily uh, really the core of a lot of oscillating circuits uh, comprising capacitance and inductance. Um, as you can see on my breadboard here, uh, I've got a capacitor and I've got a bit of coiled wire which I made up from uh, coiling some wire around a pen. Uh, and that's basically it, hooked up to a, uh, a battery supply, or in this case 5 volts. Uh, and what I want to show is basically it, the reality of these two simple components connected in parallel and the resulting voltage that's appearing across the circuit, the, the parallel circuit. Now, theory books will talk about things like this, where you'll see uh, a nice oscillating circuit here with constant amplitude and a nice frequency and it's all very beautiful sinusoidally. Uh, over here we have a sort of a damped version of that. Again, uh, there's a clear frequency involved but the peaks uh, decrease to zero essentially as energy is lost in the circuit. Uh, so what I'm going to do in this clip is simply show uh, basically this picture in reality. Uh, I've got uh, my oscilloscope all set up and uh, I, I've got the basic circuit here. Essentially, I have, uh, okay, red and black wires going to the power supply. You can see the, uh, this little blue wires connecting the positive into the capacitor. And right now, all I have is the capacitor connected up and charging across the 5 volts of my DC supply. So what we'll do is I'm going to measure the voltage across that uh, capacitor. Uh, when I connect it in parallel with this inductor. This is just a little bit of wire. You can see it here. And what I'm going to do is essentially take the blue wire and connect it like so. Then it disconnects the power supply from these two components. And all we're left with is the capacitor connected in parallel with the inductor to the common ground. And this common ground is not doing anything because I don't have any uh, a voltage being impressed across the circuit from this uh, this uh, uh, broken link here in, the, in in my breadboard. And what I'm going to do is measure the voltage across this and hopefully capture uh, a picture that looks a lot like this. So let's see if I can do this while I'm holding the camera. So here I'm going to be charging up the capacitor and I wanted to uh, uh, connect my oscilloscope so I'm going to get the common ground there and then with my uh, dexterous hands here, I'm going to connect that up to the capacitor. And as you can see, not much is going on, but I hope to capture a trigger of the damping ringing, if you like, between the capacitor and the inductor, according to theory, which says that basically, if I just make some room here, you may have seen these in the books where you have an inductor and capacitor where the capacitor is already charged separately separated by some sort of switch or break in the circuit when you close that switch the energy in the electric or electrostatic field across the capacitor passes to the inductor the inductor stores that energy in a magnetic field and then releases it in the opposite direction back into the capacitor the capacitor charges the other way and then it when it gets to maximum, it releases the energy again back into the inductor. And this back and forth process continues, uh, in theory, indefinitely. If there were no losses in the circuit, you'd have this beautiful up and down motion. 
In reality, components will lose energy through resistance and radiation effects, I guess, in the coil, uh, and you'll get this damping effect. Okay, so, fingers crossed, this capacitor is now just charged up to the power supply. I'm going to disconnect the power supply, connect the coil, and there we can see it. Here we can see that oscillating behavior dying out as theory expects. Well, I'm kind of pleased with that, and let's do it again. So again, just charge up that capacitor. It's now got the full 5 volts across it. And, oops, and if I connect it up, Oh, I forgot to reset my uh, oscilloscope there. Let's reset that. Charge it up. Nothing on the screen. And if I show you that while I plug it in, there you go. So just plugging that in. We have a purely isolated circuit between capacitor and a bit of coil wire. Nothing else is really being influenced here. And the energy is passing back and forth between them. And the voltage across the capacitor is dropping and then rising and dropping and rising and dropping and rising until it gets to basically a, a, a zero point. Okay, that's the end of this clip. Take care. Bye.